How are you? Extremely well. Okay. Um, I had lots of questions, and they were happily answered by so many people asking for me. So I have this one question about my children and uh, why I love them so much, but they make me crazy sometimes. And, you know, my husband says, well, you know, hold a vision of them cleaning their room or helping you. <laughs> you know? Delusion helps. It's just... <laughs> Can you take your attention from them? In other words, does your happiness depend on what they're doing? Um, no, but yesterday I sat with my littlest one. I have three. Um, and we were looking out the window and we saw two uh, parent geese with three babies, which is our family. And we were watching there in the stream and this well-being was amazing. And I said, look, there's mommy, daddy and the little three children. And she said, I guess those parents really like being with their babies. And it was really sweet, but I suddenly had this pang because oftentimes I find that I'm so focused on my work and my other commitments that are very overwhelming often, and I don't spend as much time as I'd like to with them, to be with them, and I allow them freedom. You know what's interesting <laughs> is that your little one was doing for you just what we teach everyone to do. Your little one was watching for an opportunity of something that was a vibrational match to what she wanted and then offering a statement about it. In other words, not waiting until something goes wrong and then saying this has gone wrong, but instead watching for something that somehow mimics something that is wanted and amplifying that. Mm -hmm. So then, as you sort of felt the sting of it a little bit because you felt a little maybe like... You don't always do exactly that. But then we promise you, your little one would not want always that. If you will watch those little foul friends for a while, you will see at some point mother will peck them on the head and that will be the end of that. <laughs> In other words, uh, take your child and sit to watch them every single day so that you don't miss that moment. <laughs> Because the goose knows something that sometimes you have forgotten, and that is that she is preparing her little ones for independence, and so are you. So never feel uncomfortable about it. And every time, no matter when it is, that mother begins to break loose from little ones, the little ones never like it at first. Mm -hmm. But if you don't break loose, eventually they will come to really resent you because their natural freedom is so important to them. Well, I have to say I feel very much alone in the way other people parent that I'm often allowing them their freedom and to go off and play and my children are more independent than other parents' Wonderful. children. But, you know, then I'll hear a story that my neighbor said, oh, we came home one day and your kids were riding the bikes on top of our stone you know, patio or something. And so there's certain boundaries I'd like to teach them to be respectful within the community. Yes, but also, do you think that it is possible for you to precede your children in the world and find out all of the rules that they are expected to keep and teach them all to them? Or do you want your children to learn to trust their own guidance and to develop their own relationships with others? In other words, what you might say to your neighbor is, I am very sorry that my children have offended you. It will be helpful to them if you will discuss it with them. Because one thing I know about my children, they will listen to you. And when they know that you prefer something, they will do their best to comply because they care. And your neighbor will just melt right away into it. <laughs> But if you get defensive and say, oh yes, I will arbitrate on your behalf. I will add your request to the endless list that the world is making of things that I need to teach my children so that you can be happy. In other words, you couldn't possibly fulfill that promise. But you can tell them, you are helping my children to learn their way in this world, and I'm grateful. So how can I receive more of that 
with my children at home in terms of keeping the house in somewhat of an orderly state. I cannot stand in chaos and go, oh, this is just fine, and I don't care that you've messed your room constantly. And I love that they, and I let them... Well, then why do you call it your room? Why don't you call it my room that I let you use? <laughs> I, you know, I say things like, well, as long as you live in my house, I, you know... I, my I, house? A, our house. <laughs> my house? Where do they live? In your house? That's harsh. That is. Yeah. That's like saying, I brought you into this world, but you have no place yet. There is no place for you. You live in my place. And you live by my rules. How many of your parents say that to you? As long as you're in my house, you live by my rules. And your children are saying, I'm leaving here as quickly as possible. I'm leaving here as quickly as possible. Because innately, they know that there must be some place that they get to be free, you see. And so what you're really talking about, and we know, we're exaggerating this boldly. Yes. We are. But what you're wanting to remember is that they feel ownership of where they are too. Now think about this emotional meter and think about the feeling of not being free and apply it to yourself and think about the way you behave with the way you would behave or have behaved or might behave when you don't feel free. Don't you just set out to prove how free you are? Yes, and I, I always and, have. And wouldn't they be the same? So as you say, this is my house, that doesn't make them feel free. As you say, this is our house and this is your room. And you get to keep your room however you want to keep your room. It's your room. Can you see how that soothes their sense of freedom? Mm -hmm. And it is our promise to you that if you really mean that and you help them to understand that, that then you will begin to see from their place of feeling free and thus from their place of connection, you will begin to see them inspired to things that you have not seen from their place of not feeling that it is theirs to keep. You say, everyone wants to feel good. It is our promise to you. And everyone wants to know that the world is supporting them. And anything you do that makes them feel a combination of their freedom and their independence will give them that feeling of support. It's such an interesting thing. The only place that freedom exists, the only place that freedom exists is in that place of connection with source energy. So... It's a little confusing, we know, because in some ways it sounds like feathering their nest so that they feel better. But we're not encouraging you to clean up their mess. We're encouraging you to find something else to think about while you allow them to find their own freedom. Mm -hmm. And it is our promise to you that you can do it. Now give us some examples of some things that happen, and we'll show you what we would do if we were standing in your physical shoes. Just well, some things that happen pretty regularly. Well, I work from home, and we have my office in the living room. It's kind of our combination living room, office, family, meeting room. All right. Now, how does that feel? <laughs> does that feel like it's wonderful that we can live a lot of different life together, or does that feel like your home life, children, is interfering with my work life? In other words, what does that feel like to you? Does it feel like togetherness? Does it feel like not missing out on my children? Does it feel like interruption? Does it feel like I'm happy to be with my children? In other words, that would have been a perfect opportunity for you when your little one saw the geese to have said, yes, they work from home too. <laughs> <laughs> we want you to say, isn't it nice that the universe has yielded to me all of these considerations that allow me to do a combination of everything? I'm doing a really wonderful job here. Because that's the thing that we can feel in you that needs to be soothed. You want someone to let you know that we are approving of everything that you're doing. You want someone to say, good job. In the way that you know your children like it when you say, good job, you would like it if somebody would say, good job. But you know... It's your own inner being that's always saying to you, good job. But you've got to be in a place where you feel it, you see. And when you're saying, it's chaotic or I have chaos, then you're putting yourself in a place where you can't feel your inner being saying, good job. When you are feeling critical of something that you've done or, or some outcome, you're not in a vibrational place where you can hear, good job, even though it's constantly flowing to you. 
It is remarkable the things you're doing. It's remarkable the work you're doing. It's wonderful the flow you've got going. You're accomplishing so much more than almost anyone would and so much more than you would be able to if you were working out of the home. In other words, you've found a way to make it all work together. But the reason that it feels sort of overwhelming to you is because you're still trying to use someone else's standards as the criteria of how successful you are. And that's what you've got to let loose of. You've got to let loose of everybody else's criteria of what a good job you're doing and you've got to let the joy factor be the only thing that matters so don't you love it that you can look out the window with your little one at the right moment to see the goose isn't it nice that you're there and you get to see that in other words there are so many positive aspects of what you've got going oh yes if we were standing in your physical shoes we'd just make lists of positive aspects of all of the wonderful things you've put in order and that would be enough to clean up your vibration to yield you all of the things that you're wanting Thank you. That feels good enough, doesn't it? It feels amazing. Yes. Thank you very so good. very much. We Come. want you to not give a rip what we or anybody <laughs> thinks about how you're doing. Because if you try to please even one other, even if it's someone as delightfully dead as Abraham, <laughs> you're still in that mode of trying to find something other than the way you feel about it, you see. Nothing else matters except the way you feel. And we can tell, not only by the way you feel now, but by the way you usually feel, that you are mostly in vibrational alignment with your own desires. Good. Okay, great. Thank Good. you very much. Yes, indeed.